Good morning, folks, and happy Wednesday again. Uh, so glad you could join me today. I'm out on the porch this morning. It's a little chilly uh, and having a bad hair day, so I got the hat on. Uh, so sorry I have to endure these goofy looks, but I wanted to finish uh, um, the rest, uh, at least touch on the rest of the book of Haggai this morning. We started um, last week, and uh, just for a quick refresher, uh, the people who have been in exile, now the, uh, the Persians are going to allow them to go back and rebuild the temple and rebuild Jerusalem. So they head back under the leadership of Joshua the priest and Zerubbabel, who is the governor. And off they go to rebuild, and Haggai speaks to them concerning ignoring the house of the Lord while rebuilding their own homes. Um, and that word is effective. So off they go. They begin to set aside the work of their own homes, and they begin to work on the temple. And that is a good thing. However, the people are getting discouraged because they see, they remember Solomon's temple and how beautiful and elaborate it was. And this isn't that. It's not nearly as wonderful. And, and you would expect that with they probably have limited resources and such. But Hag, the Spirit of the Lord through Haggai encourages them and reminds them, you keep building. Uh, there's that temple. It will be beautiful. And there will be a new temple coming one day. Uh, that will be even more beautiful than Solomon's temple. And just encourage them to keep doing what they were doing, despite their work seemingly not to be too impressive. And folks, I can tell you, we need that word of encouragement as well, especially those of you who are ministering, uh, whether it's in the church literally, or you're witnessing, you're sharing, you have friends that you are discipling, um, and you look and you sit like, boy, this just doesn't look good. What a bunch of nuts we got in our ministry. How people are failing. They're not living up to what they should be. And it gets discouraging. And I believe the Lord would tell us, keep going. Keep pursuing. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and sure enough, the people continued to work on building this, uh, on building the temple. Then uh, the Lord has something else to point out to uh, the, the people as well. And in the book of Haggai, I want to read, it's uh, chapter 2, and I'm going to start with verse 10, read a few verses here. Um, uh, so he comes back initially, when he comes back to speak to them about being discouraged, that's about a month later. Now this is about two months later, and it gives the timing. Uh, so he comes back again in verse 10. It says, on the 24th day, the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Thus says the Lord of hosts, ask the priests about the law. If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches with his fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any kind of food, does it become holy? The priest answered and said, no. Then Haggai said, if someone who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these, does it become unclean? And the priest answered and said, yes, it does become unclean. Now he is referring to the Levitical law back further in the Old Testament. And the priest knew these things. These were ritual laws about cleanliness and uncleanliness. Verse 14, then Haggai answered and said, so it is with this people and with the nation before me, declares the Lord. And so with every work of their hands and what they offer is unclean. So the Lord through Haggai is making the point. You know the scriptures, you know the rituals. There are ways that you could be uh, ceremonially unclean. And there are also ceremonies that could make you clean. Uh, this was very important. It helped them to understand a spiritual um, lesson. And Haggai is basically saying, it is good. You're, you're going. You've left your homes. You're working on the house of God. Don't be discouraged by the way it looks. You keep going forward. Um, but he's saying what's going on is you are doing the work of the Lord, so to speak, but your hands are unclean. There's not a purity that is in your lives. And when you bring that 
um, uncleanliness and touching something in your ministry that is clean, you are making it unclean. So not only do we need to focus and keep the kingdom of the Lord first in building his house, which is who, who we are, to be encouraged when things are not looking too good, but we need to do this work with a cleanliness. There needs to be a purity in our lives. And we know the washing uh, of our lives with the blood of Christ. Uh, we cannot do it without that. But to continue to walk and uh, to be falling to things that are sinful, whether it's bitterness or envy, something wrong in your marriage, something you're doing in your personal life, things that are unclean before the, the Lord. We do not want to bring those things in and try to do the work of the Lord with unclean hands. Um, and Haggai elaborates a little bit further that it is through obedience. It is through purity where these things can happen. And Mark even touched on obedience this past Sunday in church, uh, uh, speaking of that. It is so essential that we are obedient to the Lord all the time, not just when we're ministering, but in our private lives, in our alone time, when we're with our families, at work, whatever it is, that purity needs to be there. We don't want to try to do a pure work with unclean hands. Um, there is a, um, a man back in the late 1600s uh, called George Fox. And he is or was the leader of the Quaker movement. I know these days we think of Quakers, we think of oatmeal. But this is a group, and it's still out there to a smaller degree. But George Fox was a member of the Church of England. And he felt that a lot of the church, uh, he called them professors. Not like a college professor, but someone who would profess Christianity but in their lives, they did not live it. And he wanted something different. He knew that the Lord required something different. And out of that, he formed the Quaker movement. And it was outside of the Church of England because he wasn't going to reform that. But believers that, that knew and served God um, in, in a way that it, it, it consumed their entire lives. So the Quakers. And uh, William Penn... Uh, who is the founder of Pennsylvania, which is where I'm from, he, he referred to uh, George Fox, and this is what he said. He said that George Fox, in all things, acquitted himself like a man, yea, a strong man, a new and heavenly-minded man, in all things. In other words, William Penn observed that George Fox had a consistently a consistency in all things throughout his entire life and every aspect of his life. He served, he loved God faithfully, not bringing anything unclean into his ministry. Uh, may we do the same. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.